I greet you all with the peace of the Lord. Also for the people that are watching us through Zoom and YouTube, I invite the church to stand. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of John, chapter 2. I would like to read a gift during the prophetic service. And I will read the, the gift literally. And after that, we're going to discuss the prophetic side of it. Uh, the vision shows a man in a prison and his wife arrived with a certain amount of money, but it was very small to pay to, for the bill. And when they noticed the amount of money that she had, they, they started to mock her because the money was not sufficient. And she started to cry. And as she cried with her eyes closed, a being dressed in white with the, all the aspects of authority arrived with a bag of coins and paid an amount even superior than needed to bail him out. Amen? So, during the message, we're going to talk about that. John chapter 2, starting on the verse 1, says, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of the purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece amen let's stop the reading right here the church may be seated and brethren we can see in this message that everything related to the project of salvation there was the first miracle made by Jesus he was approximately 30 years old and when he started his ministry He started very spiritually and he started to transmit it to the Jews, not only to the Jewish people, but to everyone. And now the project of salvation of man, of mankind, was through his life. So there is no story about that he did something when he was a child? No. There's no such a thing like Jesus was perfectioning as he was growing. No. The Bible does not mention any other miracle before that. That was the first one made by Jesus as the Son of God. And here we see a wedding and back then the, the, the marriage, the wedding, lasts about seven days. It's not, it was not like today. It was a very festive moment. People used to travel far. And they stay in the house of the father, of the, the, the bride. And he provided with the, 
the special garments for the wedding. It was a huge banquet, especially of someone that was uh, wealthy. So the, the invitees stayed there for days. The guests could eat and having fun with the family members and that how was the wedding back then. The Bible does not mention how Mary and Jesus were uh, ended up in this wedding. The Bible does not specify if they have any f family connection, but the Bible simply say that at the third day, so the third day of the wedding celebrations, Jesus was there with Mary, his mother, and the disciples. And something happened that normally does not happen. There was something odd, awkward. The wine has finished. Imagine. People that like to criticize. Now, if you do anything in your house, people will start making fun. Did you see the, the clothing? Did you see that? Imagine seven days in a wedding like that and missing the wine, which was something very important. So when these news arrived, when they ended up hurting that the wine was gone, what a difficulty. So as Mary, the mother of Jesus, heard that the wine has finished, she approached Jesus and said, the wine is over. Jesus gave her an answer and if we look with the reasoning it sounds like something strange. Woman, what does your concern what does your concern has to do with me? It sounds a little rude talking like that to his mother. But these points that Jesus was mentioning. It's something related to the salvation and we see some important points. The third date, for example, what does the third date talks about? Talks about the death and resurrection of Jesus. Immediately, the text starts at the third day. The most important thing is the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So there were weddings in Cana of Galilee. So we see that the salvation through Jesus was not only to the Jewish. It was also for the Gentiles, the people that were not from Israel. When you see the map, the Galilee was up north of Israel. It's an area where the ministry of Jesus began. Jesus walked a lot in Galilee. It was the, the high side of it and the low side of it. The population, the higher population was in the lower Galilee and the part of the north was uh, more difficult to live so there's not a big population there. Some used to live there but the, the population concentrated more in the low side of it. There was many roads, it was beautiful, good, good commerce and it was a city that since the time of Joshua when he 
distributed the tribes and the inhabitants. All the inhabitants stayed there since the Joshua era. They were not dismissed. They were not asked to re to leave. So they start to convive with the Jewish. Because of that, we used to say the Galilee of the Gentiles. Because there was Jewish and also the Canaanites that used to live there since the era of Joshua. So along the time in the Old Testament, talks a lot about, uh, not, not, doesn't talk a lot about it. Uh, we see Solomon giving some cities to Tyro. It doesn't mention much about it showing that there was a region that there was a bunch of Gentiles living there. Defining the Gentiles is whoever wh whoever is not from Israel. We are considered Gentiles. So if you're not from Israel, you are Gentile. So now Jesus chooses exactly in this area the beginning of his ministry showing us that salvation now it's opened it's not restricted to the people from Israel as they desire or they expect it and Jesus now starts to operate in this wedding so when Jesus and his mother and his disciples were invited for this wedding So mother and son and a bunch of friends, sometimes you invited one and they call five or more. This is very normal, right? So if you invite someone that has a lot of friends, all the friends want to come. So to see Jesus, mother, and 12 disciples. So people that were not invited, they, they will go anyway, even they were not invited. If the disciples would not with Jesus, they not would be with uh, in this wedding. If they were not walking with Jesus, following Jesus, if they did not accept the call from Jesus to be to be disciples, and by the way, great majority of the disciples were from Galilee. And if they did not accept the invitation, the call from Jesus to turn his disciples, certainly they will not be in their wedding. And this wedding represents what? The, the wedding between Jesus as the, the groom and the church as the bride. See, now the prophet context It's not a coincidence, but this part of the project of God is the plan of salvation. God knows everything, and everything is under His control. This wedding, the way, the, the circumstance, the lack of wine, everything was under God's control, and He is in control of everything. If you are here tonight, that's because there is a project from God for your life. You did not come tonight. You're not watching through Zoom or YouTube because you have nothing to do. But God has taken you to participate in the service because your soul has a place in God's project. You are here. We are here because we want to receive a blessing from God. We want to get closer to Him. And we want something special that only God can give us. The solution of a problem, the answer of a prayer, a miracle. Only God can do miracles. And Jesus here in this moment, he says something interesting. Woman, what had I do with this? What do I have to do with you? Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? And we're going to analyze now uh, 
something that we can celebrate. We, we, have, we need to understand that walking with Jesus, we're being prepared to participate in the wedding with Jesus. We need to be part of this body. We need to be part of the body of Christ. We cannot be distracted. If Jesus is in the canon of Galilee, we need to go there. There is a blessing for us. We, we have something, certainly, that He's going to teach us, and we need to hear. Let's go to Galilee. Is Jesus there? So if the church sees that, especially you that comes tonight, if you are distant from God, if you are distant from the presence of God, use this moment and approach to Jesus. Do not miss any opportunity. Do not waste your time with things that does not belong to the kingdom of heaven. Let God produce an experience in the presence of God. And the mother of Jesus says, we we out of wine. And Jesus says, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? In this dialogue, Mary now represents whom? Israel. Why Israel? Because until this moment, what does Israel has? And what was the most important thing in Israel? It was the law of Moses. The, the way that they approached to God was through the law, fulfilling the law, following the law. Don't do this, don't do that. Do, do not work on Saturday, do not eat this, do not eat that. This was the, the liturgic life of Israel, the fulfillment of the law. And that's why there was the high priests, and all the principles, watching everything and paying attention to everything. And this was the lifestyle. So Jesus came to fulfill the law. He was the only one that could do it. Since his childhood, Jesus was left behind where? During a celebration. His mother and father went to the celebration in Jerusalem and all of the Jews needs to attend. And so Jesus was there fulfilling, but he was left behind. It was a multitude of people, everybody joyfully, everybody celebrating. So Jesus was left behind after certain time where was the kid so the mother all uh, immediately accused the husband oh where's the kid and the father don't care he, he keep going he keep marching and he thinks the mother is watching go to the park the father is watching the nature and the mother is watching the kids and now Jesus fulfilled the law to to the extent of it. And now he talks to his mother this way, woman, what does your concern has to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Until that moment, the Jewish has an understanding about salvation related to the fulfillment of the law and the obedience to the law. And Jesus said to her and to other people later on, My hour has not yet come. In the chapter 7, you're going to see Jesus and his brothers. And they ask him to go to Judea. And you have done many things. When you see in the chapter 7, his brothers 
told him, you need to go to Judea too because they need to meet you. They need to see you. They need to know you. So if you want an authority, you have to go there as well. You make miracles there. And Jesus says, it's my, my time has not come. My hour has not yet come. And several times when they tried to arrest him, he said, my time is not yet come. But in the chapter 17, when he was about to be arrested and crucified, close to his death, he prayed to God and say, God, Father, it's time. My time has arrived. Glorify my name. Let's go to the chapter 17. Jesus talking. Jesus says, lifting his eyes to the heaven, says, Father, my time has come. Glorify your son so your son can glorify you. And Jesus started to talk about what was about to happen. It was not of his desire, but he says, if it's your will, let your will be done. I'll, I'll face it. So Jesus was ready to present the salvation, not by the works, not by the endeavor, or an obedience of the law, an obligation. But Jesus was coming to show and present salvation by grace. That's why the text says, to the third, at the third day, because Jesus was trying to teach them that through my, my death and my resurrection will be salvation. Because what the mankind fear most is the death. If you believe and don't believe, and no matter what, you can, you can carry the Bible, but if someone tells you that you're going to die, you're going to be afflicted. You're going to try to impeach that. No matter how difficult is your life, if someone asks you, do you want to die? You want to finish your suffering? They will answer, no, 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 no. Even though I'm suffering, I want to still alive. Nobody wants to die. Because it has a, a meaning for the man that when you died, everything is over. Frustration, suffering, sorrow, difficulties, fighting. But uh, people has that uh, the way to think that if you die, everything is, has finished. The flesh does not want to finish. And the soul wants to go back to God. And the Bible says there was this fight, this battle between the flesh and the soul. The soul wants to come back to the Creator. But the flesh wants to stay here because it lives under the things of this world. Like Adam. But to us, like God, uh, bring the Spirit blowing into the nostrils of Adam. So that's why our greatest fear is death. So Jesus was saying, I am the resurrection and the life. When Martha complained with her sister Mary, we, we called you. We told you our brother was sick and you didn't come. And Jesus says, Martha, I am the resurrection and death. I am the death and the resurrection. I have the solution. That's why he said to his mother, my hour has not come yet. It will, make any sense, it will not make any sense prophetically. If Jesus comes and do miracles, without a meaning, a prophetic meaning, like a, a show, the Red Sea opened. This doesn't take man nowhere. And if you take, I saw the miracle, and now I'll go to heaven. None of the ones that left Egypt, all of them lost their lives. You know, bigger miracles, The, de the ten plagues, the Red Sea opened, so many years, bread, the manna every day, the column of fire, the column of cloud, and many of them perished. Many of these 
denied and betrayed. And they say, I was buried in Egypt. They used to have a cemetery there. If I die here, I'm going to be buried in the desert. So miracle, per se, does not take man to any place. But the, the prophetic side of it does. A woman, what does what do you have with me at this time? My time has not come. So the vision that I said in the beginning of the service, the commitment that this woman has with her husband, he was arrested. And she was trying to pay with an insignificant amount of money. This is the law. The law was good for a time, but now Jesus is present. Jesus came to this world, and he died for us. He surrendered for our lives. He died for us. But at the third day, he resurrected. He rose again, and now we have a new covenant, a new, com a new pact with him. Salvation now is not through the law, is not through the works, so whatever was insignificant that did not have enough value, Jesus now comes and brings authority. And he paid with a big amount of value. Jesus has died on the cross to promote the salvation, to let us know the real salvation in Jesus. This is the way. This is the project of God. Woman, what does your concern to me? The most important thing is that Jesus is in our hearts. The most important thing is to believe and understand that he died, but he is alive. He rose again. And we also can die for this world and rise again and be prepared to be in the arms of God. This is what Jesus was trying to teach and establish in the first miracle of his life, the project of salvation for the mankind. No, no more whatever we want, but what is the, the will of God. And Jesus said to his mother, but after that she learned the lesson and she said, Whatever he say to you, obey. I keep thinking about Mary. Even though she, she knows who her son was, it was Jesus, the Son of God, and she knew since the pregnancy that she was, you'll be the mother of the Son of God, the Messiah. And her and everybody else thought that he will come to deliver them from the Roman Empire. But Mary knew that he could do something, being the Son of God. And she said, and he said to her, my time has not come yet. But when the time arrived, he died on a cross and he resurrected, and now we can have salvation. So this woman of the vision that I mentioned, she's presenting something according to her understanding, to her reasoning. But God always send the heavenly answer and resource. When we cry, when we understand that we are nobody, that we have nothing, but that God has everything and He is everything and He will send the answer. His name is glorified. And we are blessed. Amen? So may the Lord bless us with this word. Let's hear song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. The miracle we cannot forget to mention is to transform the water into wine. And what does that mean? This water is used for when people come, when people arrive from trips, far trips. So they used to have roads with a lot of dust. So those containers of water, they were used for to put water and to receive the people from far trips to wash and to purify. And the, Jesus has transformed those into wine. The water that was there into wine. So sometimes people wash themselves just ex exteriorly, just in the appearance. M my grandmother used to say, the soap can wash everything, it cannot wash the tongue. So some people purify themselves just externally. So Jesus instructed them to use the, all these vessels of water Every container of them could fit about 20 gallons of our measure. 120 gallons of wine that was transformed from water. And what does that mean for us? So whatever washes outside Water is something that has no taste, right? You drink because it's a need. When you're thirsty, you drink water. And Jesus transformed whatever has no taste, no value, into something valuable, wine, that talks about the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the operation of the Holy Spirit that is from within. The experience of salvation in our lives needs to be something that transforms us and to take us to desire to have the blessing of the salvation in our lives. So this is what Jesus brought as a teaching. We need to have the desire to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Let's stand, let's have a word of praise. We bless you, Lord, for your words. It talks deeply to our hearts for the understanding that He have provided us. We glorify you every day and we recognize that it's a miracle to be part of this work of the Holy Spirit. And we praise you as for you only has the word of salvation, the words of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for the pro projects of salvation. Blessed be your name for the operation that you have done in our lives. We glorify you for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we're going to find this project of God in the whole world, from Genesis to Revelation. And in any text, in any passage, you're going to find the project of salvation being revealed. Just read the Bible in fellowship and you have remarkable experiences with God. God, we praise your name and we ask you that you can receive our adoration, our gratitude for our salvation, for our call, the experiences that we are having in your presence, O oh Lord. Many times, We show indifference, but your love has moved us, has transformed us, 
your mercy and your love always bring us back to your presence. As for in your presence, we were and we always be transformed day after day. Give us a night of rest and a blessing tomorrow. Allow us to one more time hear your sweet voice and live by your word. Take us in peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. One more announcement. The people that are watching from Zoom, Zoom, this moment of the service is very important. It will be very interesting if the ones that are watching to, through Zoom to leave all the activities, reserve this moment because it is a service. If possible, sit with your family around, part, uh, participate actively, actively through to, uh, uh, to the service. Because in this moment, when you have, you must have fellowship. It's like the early dawn. I I, I participate in in several activities. You can watch whatever you want. You, if you don't have conditions, amen. But if you can reserve this moment with the local church, it will be amazing. But if you work, if you have other activities, and you're not able to, that's okay. Amen. You can participate in other of our activities. But this, as a local church, this is your family. This is your house. So do not be involved in anything during the service. Do not cook. Do not go after kids. Call them and sit with them so we can reach out the blessings. That's why God gave us this this gift about the importance of the service being watched and followed with fellowship. We, we say to you all, peace of the Lord. If you want a, a prayer and assistance, we're going to turn off the connection in the church. And if you are watching through Zoom, there are several workers and, and deacons.